Firebase is a fantastic tool for building applications, but when you get to a certain scale, you're going to need some functions and a real API. Hi, my name is Stephen Fluman, and today on Demos with Angular, we're going to be diving into a real Angular application where we're going to add in Firebase functions and then create a custom API that sits on top of Firebase and the real-time database, giving us complete control of querying and updating the FireTime real-time database however we want. We're going to start off with a brand new CLI project, as we always do, so we'll just call this custom API. And what we're going to do is we'll skip routing for now. You know how to routing. We'll use SCSS. We're not really even going to be operating very much in the Angular layer today. We're going to be operating almost entirely in the Firebase Functions layer. And what we'll do is we'll just show you very briefly at the end how to be listening to your API using the uh, Angular Applications HTTP Client module. So now let's CD into our custom API folder here. And let's go ahead and spin up Visual Studio Code for our new project here. And let's go ahead and also spin up an ng serve. What we should be seeing here while that spins up and while that compiles is this is a brand new blank CLI application using the latest version of Angular. Another thing that we can do in the background here is we could jump over to the Firebase console and create a brand new project. I've pre filled in the name custom API here. And let's hit continue. And let's say sure, you can set up Firebase analytics if you want, we will use one of my analytics domains. And that project should be set up in the background. And back in our application, we should have finished our ng build by now our ng serve. And so we should be able to see localhost 4000, everything is working just fine. And we can go into our app component here and delete everything because hello demo. Make sure that's working great. We have an Angular application that is working. And at this point, our Firebase console should be ready. Now, what we're going to be using is we're going to be using a real time database. And so, what I want to do is I want to create a little dummy key for myself. And so, we're going to say create database and we're going to put it in locked mode. Now, this is really critical because this is what's going to really show off the fact that we are building a custom API. Um, you can do a lot with Firebase Real-Time Database. It's fantastic for uh, creating long lists, creating large databases, huge numbers of concurrent users. But there are some things that the Real-Time Database is, in my opinion, not as good at, such as uh, doing custom authenticated actions. So if you wanted to allow a moderator, for example, to go in and modify um, properties within other people's uh, sections of the real time database, things like that can be very, very hard. And so what we're doing today is we're creating a custom API using cloud functions that allows you to do anything you want, you can really just access this with your own custom authentication logic, you can access it with your own custom read writes. And so I could make a Firebase function that reads from anywhere in the database, regardless of permissions, and modifies anything anywhere, regardless of permissions. So we're gonna start in locked mode, as I said, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, connect up our Angular project up to this Firebase backend. And we'll just maybe create a sample key that says, hello world. So when we're fetching, we can actually see that key. So uh, back in the console, what I'm gonna do is I'll CD into this project and I'm gonna say ng add at angular slash fire. So this is gonna add in the Angular Fire tool chain that allows me to connect to the real-time database. They've got lots of really great uh, observable and reactive methods. They've got integration with analytics. They've got integrations with authentication. Angular Fire is a fantastic, fantastic library um, for using Angular. And so we'll just say custom API, we'll connect it up to that backend. And then the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say Firebase, uh, and actually in order to use the Firebase command line, we're gonna say yarn global add Firebase tool. So this is a tool chain that installs this Firebase command into your path. And then what that allows you to do is uh, actually reach deeply into some of the Firebase tools. So let's go ahead and use this Firebase command to connect up to the Firebase backend. So I'm gonna say Firebase init functions. We're gonna say we need to connect to an existing project. And we will connect to the custom CLI. You normally don't have to do this if you're using ng add. Um, it should just automatically connect up to the right project for you. Let's go ahead and install npm dependencies. So one of the weird things that you should know is that the Firebase functions folder that's being created for you is actually going to be creating its own package JSON, which means it gets its own dependencies, but that you have to manage them somewhat independently. And that's that's going to be okay for us. Uh, most of the source code that we're going to be dealing with today is going to be in the slash functions slash source folder. 
So one of the things that I like to do is I actually like to taint. One of the things I like to do is actually change the TS config for my project and just turn off strict. Uh, obviously, strict is going to result in a higher quality application, but for demo purposes, this can sometimes get in the way. So what we'll do is we'll just comment this out. Uh, and so we have a nice little hello world function. And now what we should see is if we run uh, CD into our functions folder and run yarn serve, this is uh, going to throw an error because it's expecting version 8. But what we can do is we can just tell our Firebase function we want to use version 12. Uh, if version 12 is not supported at this time, then you can just bounce this back to 10, uh, and that will, should work just fine. One of the things that happens is that node version gets validated at uh, deployment time, and so if you're using the wrong version, uh, things won't work exactly as you expect them to. So what I can do now is run yarn serve. This should use node 12 locally and actually spin up a endpoint for my server. So if I copy this and paste it into the browser, we're going to see hello from Firebase. So our API is working just fine in a Firebase function, and we can access it uh, from our local machine. The next thing I want to do is I actually want to add a few dependencies to my project. And so I'm going to clear this out, and I'm going to yarn add a few things. I'm going to yarn add. Uh, express cores and at type slash cores so that we have the typings for the cores package. All right, we've added those dependencies, and what that now means is that in my index.ts I can actually import these things. So I can say import stars express uh, from express and import star as cores from cores. So this gets me my two packages that I'm going to care a lot about. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start using these. So I'm going to say const app equals express. And then I can say something like app.use cores. So what this does is it sets me up an express server where I can actually uh, supply multiple endpoints. I can listen to post requests and put requests and delete requests differently than I listen to get, uh, which is something you can't do with the kind of basic default capabilities within the Firebase functions. So this is a huge helpful thing. Uh, and then I can also create multiple endpoints that share a lot of code. So let's go ahead and modify our function here. Let's rename it from hello world to just hello. And now what I want to do is instead of just returning this hello from Firebase, I want to actually use the real time database. And so uh, the goal here is to be creating an API on top of the real time database. So we're going to say import star as admin. And so we're going to import this brand new um, package. Uh, symbol called Firebase admin. And what admin does is this allows me to connect to other Firebase functions, uh, excuse me, other Firebase capabilities, such as the real time database. So what we're going to do to actually set this up is we have to get access to a service account. And so if you take a look in the Firebase API, you can click on the little gear and go to users and permissions. And we're going to say service account. Now, you need a service account because uh, in order for your local machine to be able to modify and access other services that exist within the Firebase uh, account, uh, we need permissions to do that. So if you don't do this, you can't do local development, but your deployments should still work. But I find that uh, I need to be able to do local development. So we're going to go ahead and create a new private key. Just generate that key. Uh, and then this code is actually going to be key. So we're going to copy that. Uh, let's just go ahead and paste this into our project and make sure that we're using modern TypeScript rather than this kind of uh, older legacy version of code. And now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to say uh, this service account is going to be matching that new file system. So let's fix this. So it's going to be home Steven downloads. And then we have that JSON file. So again, what this means basically is because we have a service account, our local host will be able to modify the production database, modify production Firestore, any of those sorts of things. We can make calls to storage. All those things are going to now work. So that gives us access to uh, the Firebase admin namespace. And now within our function, what we want to do is we are actually going to instantiate the database and start accessing it. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to use uh, admin.database. So I'll say const db equals admin.database. Let's just reformat this so everything's nice and clean. And then what I can do is I can create a ref. So this is just a standard Firebase ref using that database. And so I can access the key hello. And then we can do something like const uh, ref dot once the value is uh, received. Then I can say then, and we'll just say response dot send hello from Firebase. 
And instead of that, what we'll say is we'll just change this to send the value. So value goes to response.send. And then we also, because we're in node and because we're trying to do things the right way, we need to catch any errors. So we'll just say error goes to console.error. So we can fetch that in case anything goes wrong. All right, so now we've created a Firebase function, an updated Firebase function that is using Express. It allows cross-origin requests uh, via cores, and it's going to send back the response hello. And actually, what we want to do is we want to start using Express now. So what we can do is we can actually move all of this code into a normal Express call. So we're going to say app.get hello. And so the Express API is the same, so request response. Um, and then what we can do is we can register on request. We're going to just pass it that entire Express application that we've defined. So when the user hits slash API, uh, we'll change this to API, so that when the user hits slash API slash hello, we're going to fetch the hello key from the real-time database. Once we have a value resolved, we're going to send that down to the user. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So if I hit yarn serve again, this should do the TypeScript compilation, spin up our new API endpoint, which when we hit it, nothing should work. But we, if we hit slash API slash hello, we should see that the function resolves from the real-time database that key and it shows it here. So if we go ahead and change that value from world to, for example, everyone, this should, as soon as I make that new API request, show up perfectly. All right, so now we have the superpower of being able to build custom APIs that are accessing and modifying and updating the real-time database. In the next video, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and show how to add authentication into this in our real app. But just to do the final step here, we are going to, in our app component, hit our local API. Now, typically what you would do is you would use the environments file to set up a path for what this is gonna look like in production, what this is gonna look like locally, but I am just gonna, for now, hard code this local API endpoint. Uh, and then in our app component, we can just uh, import the HTTP module if we don't already have it, which we can get from the Angular common slash HTTP package. And then we can use that in our app component. So we'll create the constructor We'll say HTTP is type HTTP client, and we'll say this dot results equals HTTP dot get this endpoint. And how this should work is now if we say results pipe JSON, excuse me, result dot pipe async. When we access this, we should see, hello, everyone. So everyone is coming back from the API, and it's being rendered in our Angular application. We just took an Angular application, added in Firebase, added in Firebase functions, set them up with Express and the real-time database so that we could make any custom queries that we wanted, create our own custom API endpoints. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.